In this video, I want to look at the biggest money pit folly in automotive history. Not you, Elon. This one's on Tim and Project Titan, or more affectionately called the Apple iCar. After spending billions of dollars, Apple decided to end their development of an autonomous electric vehicle. That's led to some very good reporting speaking to insiders about the project. So let's take a look at the strange details that we now know about it. In memoriam of Project Titan, the greatest electric vehicle that never was. Throughout this video, I will pay tribute to the many, many weird photoshopped attempts done by people all over the world to imagine what they were working on, but none of them were official. Project Titan started in 2014, but the idea of an Apple car predates that. Mickey Drexler, a fashion industry executive and former Apple board member, said that Steve Jobs discussed expansion into several industries, including disrupting automotive with an Apple iCar. At the time of his death, startups disrupting automotive was not really a new idea. Silicon Valley startup Tesla had their Roadster and was nearing production of the Model S. In 2014, when plans were really taking shape amidst a perfect storm of technology optimism, electric vehicles were proving they are real and the future of mobility. Traditional automakers were adding connectivity to their vehicles and enabling new over-the-air features. Autonomous vehicles that drive themselves were seen as the next great technology step, and it would happen so quickly that legacy automakers would not be able to adapt. Companies like Uber would then be able to jettison its human drivers for robo-taxis that work for free. Tech rival Google was known to be working on an autonomous system too. It's what we now call Waymo. Apple's special project group had just completed work on the iWatch and was looking for something to work on next. Project Titan was approved to explore this space. The project reportedly sought to create an advanced electric vehicle that would be better in every way than the Tesla Model S. Apple's famous designer, Johnny Ives, sought to leapfrog Tesla and beat them to a fully autonomous mobility solution where a steering wheel and pedals was not necessary. To convince the new boss, Tim Cook, Johnny developed a simulation of the future. And oh boy, I can only hope there's video of this. The story goes that Johnny sketched a futuristic people mover without a steering wheel. It resembled a Fiat Multiplia 600. Now, I'm familiar with the more recent Fiat Multiplia, and that's a weird vehicle. But the Multiplia 600 is older and more weird. A basic mock-up was made with seats and a display to simulate a drive. And then Johnny invited Tim to go for a pretend ride into the future. These images are from an article in Motor Trend, who in 2016 worked with the Art Center College of Design to imagine what a future Apple iCar could look like. And given what was said about the demo looking like a Fiat Multiplia, this may be pretty close. Tim Cook was impressed enough and scared of what other tech companies were working on, so Project Titan continued. It's been reported that Apple leadership was worried that the engineers from the special projects group would get lured away by Tesla and their charismatic and highly likable CEO, Elon Musk. During its 10-year run, reports are that the mission of Project Titan bounced back and forth between two different visions. Did Apple want to take on Tesla or be more like Google's Waymo? Originally, they wanted to develop a fully autonomous, all-electric, spacious people mover with a great user experience from Apple. In this case, they would be more like Tesla, wanting to control the entire vehicle. At other times, new leadership would come in and put the focus solely on the autonomous driving system. And they wanted to be more like Waymo. They didn't want to make a whole car, they just wanted to be great at the self-driving software. But both visions had something in common. The idea that self-driving vehicles were just a few months, maybe a couple of years away. The Society of Automotive Engineers has defined different levels of driving automation. Fully autonomous, that could conceivably eliminate the need for a steering wheel, would be SAE Level 5, operating on all roads, or SAE Level 4, restricted to certain areas or road types. Back in 2014, it seemed inevitable that self-driving cars were just around the corner. By 2015, word of Project Titan began to leak out, and the artist renderings started to roll. 
Project Titan became a committed project with a target release date of 2019 for a fully autonomous, all-electric mobility solution. When a change of project leadership took place, it shifted the focus away from the car and into getting the autonomous system right. In 2016, Apple made a $1 billion investment into Chinese tech company Didi, who used it to acquire Uber's China ride-sharing operations. They would benefit from an autonomous system like Apple was working on. Apple began using Chrysler's old test track in Whitman, Arizona, through a lease agreement with a little-known LLC, all very top secret. The test track had not been used in about a decade, but you can see from these recent satellite photos that they weren't there to use the high-speed roads. They were there to create a network of complex intersections and traffic controls. These look like shipping containers stacked to act like buildings that the car cannot see around. You have traffic lights and parked cars, just like you would have in a city, but without the bad PR when things don't go right. In 2017, investigations into DMV records confirmed that Apple had at least three autonomous test vehicles on public roads. During this time period, it seems like Apple shifted its vision off of the hardware, the vehicle itself, and concentrated its development on the software, the autonomous system, just like Waymo did. In an interview with Bloomberg, Tim Cook openly discussed the disruption going on in the mobility space, electrification, ride-sharing, and autonomy. He confirmed that Apple was focused on an autonomous system for use in self-driving cars and other applications. This was going to be the mother of all AI projects, and a difficult one at that. There was no indication that they were looking to create a car itself. Meanwhile, in nearby Fremont, California, Elon Musk was sleeping at the plant during the launch of the Model 3. He claims to have reached out to Apple to sell his company, to get their financial support for these darkest days. The meeting never took place. Tim Cook says he does not recall any such request. But years earlier, before Project Titan was established, Musk had met with Apple's head of mergers and acquisition to discuss this very thing. There definitely was the possibility of Tesla being brought into the Apple portfolio, with Elon Musk as the VP, of course, but it never got all that close to actually happening. Again, hopefully there'll be a tell-all book soon. What did happen in 2018 was Apple fielded more test vehicles. They like to use the Lexus RX 450H. There are some practical reasons for this. It's large enough to hold all the sensors on the roof and all the equipment inside. It has electric power steering and a modern communication network. Now, why they use the Lexus and not the Toyota version? I guess if you're going to build autonomy into a car, why not do it with some style? The way I see it, if you're going to build a time machine into a car, why not do it with some style? Around this time, you start to see some differences in the sensors being used for self-driving. Early test vehicles seem to integrate the sensors into the vehicles. There are pods on the front fenders, sensors in the front grille, almost like they were planning to build the vehicle around the autonomous system. Then in later test vehicles spotted, they placed all the sensors on the top, almost like a plug-and-play autonomous module. There definitely are cameras, lots of them, radar sensors, and LiDAR sensors. Those are the ones that create these rainbow visual images. As you probably know, Tesla only uses cameras for its self-driving system, and many in the industry have questioned if they can succeed without using LiDAR or high-definition digital maps. The New York Times reported that Apple was seeking partnerships with the likes of Mercedes-Benz, BMW, VW, Nissan, McLaren, BYD. Yeah, BYD. Can you imagine the EV juggernaut that BYD with Apple inside would be right now? But no meaningful partnerships happen. Around this time, Apple CarPlay, which just projects your phone applications onto the vehicle display, was starting to roll out in many new vehicles, and the automakers were nervous about what this would lead to. The idea of handing over more control of the vehicle and of the customer experience to a tech company made them wish they wore their brown pants that day. Around this time, Apple hired Doug Field away from Tesla to become VP of this project. And once again, it seems like there was a shift of the vision back to a more car-centric one, 
where Apple would take responsibility of the vehicle too. It's estimated that as many as 5,000 people were now working on Project Titan. If that's true, just the salary and benefits alone would be over a billion dollars a year, plus test vehicles and travel and suppliers. But Apple has deep pockets. 2019 came and no production car. The release date got pushed out further. Work continued through COVID lockdowns and remote working. Then in 2021, Tim Cook sat down with Kara Swisher, and he had some more to say about this mysterious project. He put the focus back on the core technology, autonomy. It was key to moving forward with any car. And he acknowledged that Apple does many development projects that never see the light of day. Comments like this give us a peek inside the decision-making at the company. There would be no reason to make a car without being able to do some level of self-driving. And that technology was taking much longer to develop for everyone. Later that year, Field left Apple and now works at Ford's. And yes, people in Detroit area, some of them still refer to it as Ford's, as in Mr. Ford's company. He was replaced by Kevin Lynch, a longtime Apple insider, and it led to another shift in the vision. Realizing that autonomous driving was taking much longer than anticipated, the idea of a car with no steering wheel got pushed out. Around the same time, rumors of a Hyundai-Apple partnership burst into the news, but only to be officially denied. In 2022, the project committed to develop self-driving highway features in four years. This would at best be SA Level 3, where the driver can take their feet off the pedals, hands off the steering wheel, and on limited roads and under certain conditions, take their eyes and brains off the road. There are only a couple of vehicles that can do this today, and no, Tesla is not one of them. They need to monitor the driver's attention. SA Level 3 is kind of controversial because once you come to the end of that road where it's allowed, you need to get the person sitting in the front seat to resume being the driver, to take control of the vehicle. And if they don't, the car needs to come to a stop and pull over to the side of the road. Some developers would rather just wait until they can achieve level four than to deal with this middle gray area. Project Titan had been de-scoped and was on thin ice, but outside of Apple, the speculation continued with some fantastic fake images of what could come out. There were rumors about Apple working with partners in Europe. I've seen reports that it was BMW. Others speculate that it was Magna, who already builds electric vehicles for Jaguar and Fisker today. Note that you have, may have seen images of an Apple digital cockpit. This is just an enhanced version of Apple CarPlay, not the Apple iCar. When CarPlay launched, it was limited to a small window in the automaker's display. Over time, more space was allowed, and now they have partnered with a couple of automakers to use the same UI consistently across all the displays. So the fonts and graphics for the speedometer, which is usually controlled by the vehicle, is the same fonts and graphics used for the media player. At some point in 2023, executives got impatient and demanded a review. By January of 2024, the plan had been descoped further. It was now an electric vehicle that would launch with SAE Level 2 Plus driving assistance like GM Super Cruise, and then it would get better over time with over-the-air software updates to provide higher levels of self-driving. Tesla has been promising the same thing, as do many other manufacturers. In China in particular, you're starting to see more EVs with a LiDAR sensor, often housed in a bubble at the top of the windshield. They want their cars to have hardware that is ready for future software upgrades. A month later, the COO and the head of Project Titan delivered the bad news. The 10-year-old program was being shut down. About 2,000 people are being affected. Those working on autonomous driving have a pretty clear path to work on generative AI at Apple. Inevitably, though, there will be some hardware and car people who will need to seek employment elsewhere. In the end, the question wasn't who killed the Apple car, but what killed it? Autonomous driving systems just haven't happened as fast as we once thought. Several companies in this space have gone under or struggled through painful reorganizations. Autonomous driving may be the ultimate AI project, but it's also one of the most difficult. Apple is wise to focus their brightest AI people on 
generative AI. I mean, how about making Siri more like ChatGPT? Maybe the explosion of AI and high-powered computing will finally get autonomous driving over the hump. But Apple got sick of burning money and said, enough is enough. They forced the Vision Pro into production, despite the objections of some insiders who felt it needed more time. But that pales in comparison to the money it would take to launch a new vehicle. Making cars is very capital intensive, and the margins are nowhere as good as software services. I hope you enjoyed this retrospective of the Apple iCar. Thanks to all the designers who penned those great renderings, and thank you for watching.